Hello, this is Eric Hudgens at Oral Roberts University. And if you're in my class, um, you probably get an assignment that starts off the semester asking, what is your perspective on the relationship between fitness and God? And honestly, I enjoy this question's response from students just to better know what your um, predisposition to fitness and health is. Uh, we all are coming from different journeys and unique to um, uh, just our upbringing, the way we were raised, the experiences and opportunities and exposure we had to health and fitness and whether we participated in sport or if we never did. Either way, um, that predisposition, I think, has a interesting relationship with our faith. Um, something that if it was not a healthy experience with health, then it is hard for us to embrace it as something set aside for us by God. Um, versus if we had a huge aspect of our life revolved around and a lot of blessings were experienced through our health or or fitness or even sport, then, then it's easy to receive how much God has been a role and a part of our journey and uses our gifts as a way to uh, not only develop um, us and who he's called us to be, but even uh, acknowledge how much he uh, draws us to himself through those those giftings and the connections that we have with others and the awareness we have on um, we need something more than ourselves sometimes to make it through and that's where I'm going to use terms like righteousness and holiness and give meaning to them um, to me righteousness uh, one definition would be in right standing with God um, I think an, another way to put it is um, there's a real authentic relationship with my creator in the sense that um, I'm in right standing with him that there's no um, there's no hiding or or fear of, of his presence um, his presence sometimes takes me places that are little beyond my own strengths and, and in the sense that's scary um, but but it's also a presence that brings peace in the midst of the most uncertain chaoses of life and a presence that gives a sense of power and ability to overcome challenges or at least a sense that things are going to work out through challenges and a sense of, uh, of purpose uh, that presence of, of kind of bringing or enlightening a perspective that this uncomfortable part that I'm going through, God's going to make something out of this that, that has value and meaning and it's going to be worth it in a sense and, and probably evolve in you know, whatever it is he set aside for me to become. That's righteousness. That's in right standing with God. It's like a, a real trusting or experiencing of his faithfulness in our lives in an authentic way regardless of our uh, imperfections and inconsistencies uh, he's consistent and, and when we experience that um, we start to realize that we don't have to be ashamed or shy away from his presence but it's something that is always available to us in a, in a presence that is, is gifted with peace and, and um, comfort and, and support not uh, in condemnation or fear or, or um, or, or, or going to like hurt us in any way, so to speak. So that's righteousness. Holiness. Holiness, and I'm still in a definition from Dr. John Ashley Knoll. Uh, if you're Anglican, um, he's, he's a very popular uh, Anglican theologian, um, but um, he's been a huge mentor in my life, and um, what a gift from God he's been uh, to me and many, many others that I, I've gotten the journey with it. But his definition of holiness is holiness is an ever increasing dependence on God. Ever increasing dependence on God. Holiness isn't about what we do or become. It's a ever 
growing closer and more reliant on who he is, who he is, and how faithful he is, and and that's that's a, a life that we can live without reserve, without fake, without uh, without a fake trying to please anybody. It's just a very holy, authentic expression of real like a real love that we know that we can actually share so holiness and ever increasing dependence on god uh this semester i had a student um post their perspective of how fitness and god relate and i thought this was a really good one so i'm going to share it my perspective on the relationship between fitness and god is that they go hand in hand and i love that start because a lot of people think like sport and faith are fire and ice and they can't go together and it's the complete opposite they have to go together they bring um let's be honest like sport has so much joy and and great experiences so do athletic um endeavors or even just any physical pursuit or fitness program you're a part of there's a sense of accomplishment there's a rush that comes from pushing ourselves physically not to mention the just physiological endorphin release and um and just the the growth that we experience like what is possible and then the peace of mind that we're bettering our health not just for a longer life but a fuller life that has fewer health distractions um and and obviously like that's something that god has created in us and for us so obviously hand in hand um he goes on in the book of hebrews the writer speaks to uh, discipline in the faith uh, chapter 12 10 Hebrews 12 verse 10 says for they disciplined us they meaning parents for a short time as seemed best to them but he disciplines us for our good so that we may share his holiness and I hope that resonates with the definition of holiness being an ever-increasing dependence on God so now as we view a physical challenge, an academic challenge, any sort of challenge we face as an opportunity to better depend or experience God's faithfulness, depend on his faithfulness or experience his faithfulness. That is the real experience we have in challenges that we face. He goes on, reflecting on this verse, the writer does not speak in the context of having discipline be a burden but rather he writes as it is for our good so that we may be holy and be made like him it is not simply our act of running or biking or swimming he's a triathlete as you can tell Uh, the triathlon is swimming biking and running in that order Um, so it's not the act of those disciplines that make us more like Jesus for it is the heart posture of surrendering our flesh to the Lord. And I love the term heart posture and then perhaps like wording surrendering our flesh to the Lord in a sense of um, putting ourselves in a place that we can't just do it on our own, but we're like almost forced into leaning on something more than ourselves, that we really tap into his presence and his faithfulness. Uh, my mentor, Dr. John Ashley Noel, Noel, uh, so eloquently encourages his, um, his I would call him dis- their, his disciples, but the, the swimmers that he speaks to, and these are elite Olympic caliber swimmers, and, and his prayer for them is that they would meet Jesus in the water, that they would actually do their thing at the level they do it, in the midst of that presence that obviously instills in us a a spirit fuller than we can muster up in our own strength and so i i I really like the way that he puts this um that's a that's a heart posture right it's a it's literally a better posture when we're in a presence that, that that gives us peace that gives us a sense of power that's beyond our own abilities and a sense of purpose that whatever the outcome is there's meaning and value to the experience because of his presence in the midst of it 
In addition, he says, the writer of Hebrews goes on to say in verse 11, so we're at Hebrews 12, 11, for the moment, in the moment, all discipline seems not to be pleasant, but painful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. And obviously fruit means something that grows in us, righteousness and ever um, increasing depends on God is holiness. Righteousness is a right standing with his presence. It's like being in tune or in sync with his presence, free of any faults or shames or con condemnations or even convictions. Like it's a safe place. And, and to be that step by step, sensitive in the spirit to um, him ordering our steps, establishing our thoughts, and perfecting the things that concern us. Oh, man, that's a nice place to be, amen? He goes on, this is a very true statement about all disciplines. They make us uncomfortable and uneasy. They stretch us and cause some aches along the way. Yet without the stretching and growing pains, we would not grow stronger physically, mentally, or spiritually. And I have, uh, obviously, with the running pictures in the back, run with purpose, run and fun, they rhyme. We kind of have a motto of we, are, we enjoy the training process because we become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And when we're preparing for an event to express our optimal performance or just to really experience our best at the race that really matters, it can be the most... Um, pressured for some but for us I, I i i dare use the word fun it's the most full of joy and special like set aside for us experience that's tangible of his presence is tangible of the fullness that he's literally set aside for us as an individual and and that ability to be comfortable when it gets uncomfortable is what empowers us to find resources of, of expressing our energies, our efforts, and, and our abilities to the fullest. Um, tapping into reservoirs that we didn't even know we had, but now's the time that we get to see if they're there or not. And um, anyways, I really like the way that he explains like the power of discipline, like the positive empowerment of discipline. He goes on, the student, um, the spring 2021 student. At ORU, we have the opportunity to learn how to yield all of us to Jesus. The opportunity to um, yield our mind, our body, and our spirit. And in this pursuit of being more physically fit, we can apply the mindset and heart posture toward other aspects of life and that predisposition or perspective on the relationship between fitness and God is such a like harmonizing place to start it's open to the challenges in respect that they will be uncomfortable but it's excited about the opportunity and the growth and the purpose behind them it's a place of real faith that trusts that whatever we go through in this semester is going to grow in us something we wouldn't become if we didn't go through it. So he finishes by thus, by choosing to challenge oneself in fitness, we can be trained in this surrender to further grow in intimacy with our Lord. Amen. So I hope that's encouraging, and as you define what your relationship is between fitness and God, as you are in this um, university that calls a higher standard of excellence, that doesn't just prepare us for academic excellence, um, but it prepares us for a um, physical excellence that in, uh, will enable or empower us to really pursue our gifts and callings as we continue to grow and develop in them. We're the most dangerous in a positive way, the older we are. And so as we age and we have all of these tools and resources and 
knowledge and experiences to share and to use towards our calling. It would be nice not to have some, some health issue hold us back from that. And some health issues are uncontrollable and are going to be an experience that we experience a unique way of, of, of holiness and, and dependence on God in a very special way in that season. But others are, are preventable and honestly like not even thought of because of the consistency of developing our whole person. So cheers to the, your health, your, your happiness, and your joy and this hopefully energy that this student represents towards pursuing this semester with that um, excitement for all of that or you has set aside for you to, to grow in this semester, all that God has set aside for you to grow in. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, my prayer for you, that you might experience his presence, that it'll bring peace when you need it, power when you need it, and you'll trust that there's a real purpose in whatever you're going through, that he will bring meaning and value to it. Amen? In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings.